Hey everyone, it's Kirk Mastin here at Mastin Labs, and today is a big day. We have just launched Fuji Color Original for Capture One. So it was a long time in uh, development. We learned a lot about, the, about translating everything to the Capture One environment. Uh, our first pack, Kodak Every Day, uh, did really well in Capture One, and then we went right down the line to Fuji Color Original. So these are our two most popular packs, and we're really excited to be able to bring those to Capture One users. Um, so today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through the Fuji original pack, explaining what the different uh, presets or the styles look like in that pack, and then I'm going to be going through uh, community submitted images, showing you edits, you know, light and airy edits, and also giving tips and advice on how to get a light and airy look with your photo. Um, so we're going to give everyone a second here to join us in the room. Uh, if you are joining us from outside of the USA or in the USA, please let me know where you're from. I'd always love to know uh, where people are watching us from. We are in beautiful Ballard. It's a neighborhood uh, just north of downtown Seattle. And we are enjoying this last little bit of summer. Um, but we got people from all over joining us. So yeah, welcome Marcus. Thanks for joining us, Kyle and Casey and 68 other people, 65 other people watching in the background. Uh, just let me know where you're from. It's always really cool to see. Oh, and if you're wondering where this shirt comes from, we've made some cool shirts and they are right now being sold on Amazon. But yeah, this comes from a cool shirt that I had in college and uh, I thought it'd be fun to put my favorite films on it. And yeah, people love the shirt. It's, I've seen it pretty much all over the world at this point. Uh, we've got Robert Oliver Palmer watching, Adam Meskin from Louisville, Kentucky, Kevin Marquez from the Philippines, uh, Christian Sprogo is joining us from Perth. It's winter and raining and it's 107 in the morning. I don't know, maybe. Uh, Christopher Allen Drinkard from Minnesota. What's up? Uh, Summer Williams from Colorado Springs, Colorado. We have your photo and we're going to be editing it today in our, in our show. Uh, Drea Cordes from Cologne, Germany. We were just in Cologne. We, we went to way up north and we're going to be going to way up north again in Stockholm um, very, very soon. Uh, Ross Kenny, Kenny from Boston, Enrico Pizzaldi from Italy. Uh, how would you say hello or nice to meet you in Italian? Uh, bonjour, buongiorno, Enrico. Uh, Wira Dharma Asha from Bali and Mario Salinas from Querétaro, Mexico. So thank you for joining us and let's get started. I will be answering questions as I go and we're just going to dive right in. All right, so Fuji Color Original, our most popular pack of all time. I'm going to go through real, real quick what the different looks are supposed to look like, um, and then we'll do some edits, uh, and I'll, I'll explain how to edit in a light and airy style. So this photo just came to us um, from, let me see here. Oh yeah, right. it's, this is from Leonard Creary. It's a really, really nice photo. I thought I'd start with this one. And basically, uh, I'll just start with F uh, Pro 400H. So this is Fuji's main like light and airy film. It's very, very popular if you're shooting film, especially if you're shooting with like a Contax or a Pentax 645. I'm gonna apply it. And you can see just in one click, it gives it a nice, it gives this image a really nice muted um, pastel look. What really differentiates 400H from other films is, is that look, is the, the lighter, more pastel look. Um, it generally makes skin tones more luminous, um, more ethereal, I guess, looking. It, it's that fine art look that a lot of people crave where everything just looks perfect, like a, like a magazine cover. It, Pro 400H tends to make uh, greens really blue, so it shifts yellow greens to being more of a blue green. So when I applied this, this preset or this style, you, you could see that the greens changed 
um, and the image became more pastel and a little bit desaturated, but it still has a lot of punch. So moving on down the line, there's 400H blue. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply that right now. And the difference here is the greens are knocked down a bit. So Fuji 400H blue is, not, is the only fake film that we emulate. And essentially what it is, is the look of 400H, but with reduced yellows in the greens. So to clarify that, basically, if you're shooting in a very, um, I have another image I can show you that where you can really see it. All right, so we've got this image here by Rachel Taylor. Here it is, 400H. You can see how the, how the greens and everything were dropped down and it became a little more pastel. I'm going to just increase the exposure a tiny bit. If I was to use Fu Fuji 400H blue, all I'm doing is knocking the yellow out of the greens. So there we go. And the reason that I created this for Lightroom originally and now for Capture One is that people want that sage green color no matter what. Even if they're shooting with greens that are just way, you know, super yellow and, and in a very, very bright condition like at noon, you know, with really harsh sun coming down, that'll make your greens just look like Mountain Dew, like nuclear, like super, super saturated. Fuji 400H Blue knocks that down and brings you back to that sage green color with more wild greens. Okay, moving on down the line, we've got Fuji 160NS. Fuji 160 NS or Pro 160 NS is Fujifilm's uh, kind of their premier all around portrait film for portraits. Why? Because it has almost no grain at all, the, the film, and that's replicated in our styles. Uh, it also has very vibrant magentas and cyans. This makes green colors really pop but you still have that overall Fuji feeling where you've got cooler greens. It's just a little more saturated. I'm going to go back and forth between that and Fuji 400H so you can see. So this is 160NS. And that is, okay, this is, this is 160NS. That's 400H. And I'll do it one more time. This is 160NS and this is 400H. And you can see the greens just really, really change and pop when you do 160 NS. Uh, and the, the, the last look within the Fuji Color Original Pack is Fuji 800Z. So this was a film most famously used in the wedding world by Elizabeth Messina, who I'm a huge fan of. Amazing, amazing work if you haven't checked her out. Uh, but she, in general, would shoot Fuji, for, uh, Fuji 800Z which is now discontinued. It hasn't been around for a long time, but overexpose it. And by doing that, you would get these beautiful uh, kind of pink highlights. So when I went from 160 NS to 800Z, you could see that their skin tones went a little more pink. And in some of the highlight areas in the trees here and in the highlights in the, in the grass, it went a little pink. I'm going to just bump the exposure up a little bit. See, so maybe you can see it better in the highlights. All right, I'm gonna go through that all one more time with a full image. All right, so we're back to Leonard Curry's photo here. He sent it in at like the last second. I'm so glad you sent it in because it's so cool. We're gonna go through all the looks one more time. Okay, here's the image raw, just raw, nothing applied to it. This is Fuji 400H neutral. Here's Fuji 400H blue. The only thing that changed is the greens went a little more muted and sage colored than before. Here's 160NS. And you can see the entire image gained some saturation. Uh, and just the tones shifted a little bit. The, the greens and blues are a little more pronounced with 160 NS. 
and then 800Z. Now in this photo, seeing it much larger, you can see where that pink is kind of globally changing the entire image. And it's just a really beautiful look. I, I love this look. I love, I love all four of the main looks in this pack a lot. And so do our customers. It's outsold everything that we've ever made by a factor of 10 probably. Um, people are just wild about it. Although I am a big fan of Ektar in the Kodak Everyday Pack. That's also super nice. So those are the main looks in the pack. They all have a different purpose. Sometimes people ask, what look should I use? Like which, which look out of a pack? Um, or they ask, can I mix looks and still be consistent? I would say that you can, I would say in general, you need to stay within kind of a light and airy feel for your images using the presets or the, the styles in a light and airy way. Or be more of a dark and moody photographer and use any of the styles that we make in a dark and moody way. In general, the Fuji films that we've emulated, they are suited to a light and airy style. The Kodak films, in general, are suited to a more moody style. However, Portra original, like the, the, the non-pushed Kodak film pack that we make, that can be used for either light and airy or dark and moody. And I will answer more questions on that later if you want. And we will have other videos in the future that really dive into light and airy and dark and moody. But that's a question I get all the time. Okay. Now, how do you edit for a light and airy look? This was really popular in a live edit that we just finished. So I'm going to go over it again. Uh, essentially, these are the things you need to remember. The light that you're shooting in and your subject matter, that is what's going to set the foundation for a light and airy look. You need to be shooting someone in neutrals, like whites, uh, peach colors, you know, not bright and garish colors, but very neutral colors, uh, with a really nice separation from the background in nice even light. That is the foundation for a light and airy look without a preset or style. So you can't get there unless you have the foundation correct. And it's not shooting for Mastin, it's shooting for a light and airy look, period. No matter whose style or preset or you're using or if you use real film, you have to set the foundation. Once you have the foundation though, there's a, a way of editing that I recommend to get you to that look fast. So here is an image by uh, David Heydrich. He's, he's an awesome community member. I love this guy. Um, and you'll, you'll recognize this image because we've used it as kind of the main image for this launch. Um, but the way that I would edit this image that's already set up to be light and airy. If you look at the raw image, it's already like really, really nice. Is I would apply the preset first, or in this case, a style. So Fuji 400H, neutral. Then I would apply a lens correction. Why? Because most often when you're shooting wide open like this image, so wide open means that you're using the maximum aperture on your lens, like 1.6, 1.2. When you do that, you introduce a lot of vignetting and distortion in the image. And by using lens correction on, you take away those, def well, they're not defects, but you, you, you make the image even all the way across. And so I find it's an important step. You don't have to do it, but I think it's important to get the light and airy look. So I do lens correction on. Kind of hard to see in this image because I'm zoomed in. I'll show it again a few more times. And then you want to adjust the white balance and tint. So in Capture One, it's called Kelvin and Tint. And you just adjust that just a little bit. So this image is a little bit warm for being Fuji 400H. I'm just going to cool it off just a tiny bit. Not too much. Right about there. And the image is a little bit green. So I'm going to take the tint slider and slide it towards magenta. Right about there. 
Perfect. And I didn't increase exposure on this image. I, I, I skipped that step, uh, but I'm going to do that just a little bit too, now that I've adjusted the temperature and tint. And then the last thing is you can select a tone profile if you want. Um, I'm going to zoom out so you can see the whole, the whole image here. But a tone profile is a set of settings that we have. Um, let me get this out of the way. There we go. A tone profile is a tool that we've included with all of our packs that lets you either increase the detail in the shadows and highlights, either, either one or both at the same time, or increase the contrast in the shadows or highlights to make your image pop more. In this case, I would use Highlight Soft, and I'm using that to bring back detail in the top of her shoulder here and a little bit between the trees. So there's Highlight Soft. I'll, I'll, I'll do before and after so you can see a little better. So this is before, and that's after. It's very, very subtle, as it should be. It's a setting that I've taken from the Fuji Frontier Scanner, which is what we've created all of our emulations from. And originally it was developed to help bring back detail in the sky if you're shooting someone against a sky. So often, when you're shooting digital, if you expose for the subject in front of the sky, then the sky is totally blown out. And if you expose for the sky, then the subject is like a silhouette. What the tone profiles let you do is bring those two values closer together. So it brings in detail from the sky and it brings in detail from the shadows. And that lets you reduce the contrast difference. That was what the tool was originally made for on the scanner. And we've included that with all of our packs. <coughs> all right, so this is the edited image and that is before. Really, really cool. All right, so now that we've gone through the basic steps, I'm gonna do a few more edits and just show you, yeah, just a bunch of edits. Uh, is now a good time to stop for questions? Do we have any questions going? Okay. Is Fuji Color Original only good for a light and airy look? Um, well, like any film that's ever been made, they weren't originally made for a look. So when Fuji made 400H, they weren't trying to invent the light and airy style. It's just how we've adapted that film to a particular look. So you could use it for a lot of different looks. It's just through thousands of photographers through trial and error over years or decades have found that it really is suited to a light and airy look but you can do what you want with it. All right, moving on. So this image comes from Christopher Drinkard, and I'm just gonna go through my edits and walk you through it. So we're gonna start with um, 400H neutral. And I'm going through that, that checklist that I showed you. So I'm gonna apply the film. Now I'm going to do, uh, whoops. Come on, lens correction on. And there was a little bit of vignetting along the bottom that, that disappeared with that. Now I'm going to uh, fix the white balance and tint. So increasing Kelvin just a little bit here. They're a little bit cool. That looks perfect. And the tint, the tint looks pretty much spot on. They look great. Uh, there is a big contrast difference in their face, right, or her face right here and then the front of her shirt. Uh, it's, it's almost kind of blown out. So I'm going to use Highlight Soft. Actually, I'm going to use All Soft. There we go. Super subtle change, but it, it just helps to preserve the detail in those areas, and it brings out a little bit of detail in the hair. Um, and that is about perfect. I don't think I would change it at all. I might add grain. Uh, that's something I haven't really talked about yet. 
I, in general, don't add grain too much. Uh, it depends. If I'm, if I'm editing in black and white, you know, grain is everything. Grain is super important. I do occasionally add medium format grain, which I don't think you're going to be able to see on this live edit. Uh, but if I was to zoom way in, you'd see there's a little tiny bit of grain. And that is often just the perfect amount for me, is using medium format grain. You could also use 35 millimeter grain if you want just a little bit heavier of a grain pattern. One thing I love about Capture One is they've really got film grain right. There are like 10 different options for film grain and lots of tools. And I was able to fine tune the grain patterns to be way more accurate than I could ever do in Lightroom. So different grain has different actual shapes, like the shape of the grain is different. For example, like uh, Kodak's T-Max, the reason it's called T-Max is that the shape of the grain is the shape of a T. And for example, Tri-X, the shape of the grain is more of like an X, it's more erratic. Kind of a cool little fact. But anyway, those options are now much more available to me in Capture One, and that's something I really love about it. Um, very hard to see in this live edit, but if you, you know, buy it and try it and look for yourself, you'll see that the grain is just really, really nice. So here is before, and here is after. Really beautiful photo. So thank you so much, Christopher, for sending this in. All right. Uh, we've also got this image. I've got, I've got a few images from other live edits from a long time ago and a few that were sent in just recently. We don't have as many Capture One users, so we didn't get as many submissions for this live edit, but I've put together just some of my favorites of all time, plus four or five new ones. So I always love this image a lot. This is by Dr. Andre Peralta, I think, or maybe the photographer is Luis Sanchez. I don't know because it has both names on here. Um, but I've always loved this image, so, and I've never seen it edited in Capture One. I just pulled it this morning. So here's 400H neutral, and man, that looks awesome. Uh, I'll do a before and after, so here's before, and here's after. It has that really nice, like, micro contrast, that, that three-dimensional pop to it, and it doesn't look overdone. It doesn't look fake or overdone, or it, it doesn't have too much stylization. Uh, some, some presets and styles out there are really, really cool looking, but they're so heavy. You apply it and like everything changes. Like the greens are gone, skin can look kind of brown or super orange or weird. Uh, sometimes the, the highlights are so knocked down that there's nothing even close to white, or the shadows are so lifted with like a matte effect that there's no, you know, there's no contrast left at all. That all can look really good in some cases, but what I love about real film is that it's timeless. It has character and it's clean and it's timeless, and that was what I wanted to achieve in digital. So that's what I love about, you know, applying one of the applying 400H as a style here. The image just looks natural and real and not overdone. It just looks great. Um, this is a one, basically a one-click edit. I could just show you, I'll show you the other film, film styles in this pack right now. But this is an image that was shot in a way where, you know, there's nothing I really need to do. <coughs> so this is 400H neutral. Here's 160 NS. A really nice, yeah, it's also a really cool look. And 800Z. And now you can really see those uh, pink highlights and peach highlights coming through globally across the image. I think I personally like the uh, 400H neutral one. is really nice, this original edit. Um, yeah, man, that was easy. Let's move on. Okay. So this was just sent in by Mario Salinas. And it's a really nice photo. Uh, it's got really nice separation between the subject and the background. It was shot at f2. So this, this is a key component to, to the light and airy look, I believe, is that you need to shoot at you know, very wide open, a very shallow depth of field 
to get that separation. Um, so that's been achieved here. The color palette is very neutral. I mean, she's wearing white, so obviously. Um, and the background is, is fairly even and it's vegetation. We did another live edit video where I just go over the conditions for a light and airy photo, like the actual photo itself, and this meets all of those conditions. So I'm gonna apply 400H neutral. And you can see all the greens really got more blue, blue-ish. That, that to me, the greens in this photo now, that is the definition of a Fuji green. So when I think of Fuji film, all, basically all of their films, this color of green, this kind of sage green, this very cool green, that's what I think of, that green. Um, and it's a nice look. I'm gonna do uh, lens correction on. I got rid of the vignetting and distortion and I'm going to increase the temperature just a tiny bit. And maybe a little bit more magenta. Just a, just a touch, barely anything. And I'm gonna increase the exposure one more time. Uh, Let's see how this looks with all soft. Okay, that's all hard. And that's all soft. I actually kind of like it all hard. There we go. I know I'm kind of making, you know, breaking the, you know, committing the cardinal sin of part of her dress almost kind of blowing out, but it doesn't. If you look closely at this photo, it's not blown out. This would print really, really nicely. And the reason I chose all hard is that I kind of, in, with this photo, I enjoy that extra oomph, like that extra contrast in the highlights and shadows. It looks really, really good to me. Um, so yeah, that's how I would edit this with 400H. Really, really nice photo. All right. Here are some new photos. This is by, I am, I am totally not gonna say your name correctly and I apologize. This is by Kui Dao. So Q-U-Y is the first name and then D-A-O is the last name. So I think the last name would be Dao Q Kui? Kui? Anyway, whatever. You, you, you're doing beautiful work and I appreciate you sending this in. So. Um, and it's something different, and I love all the red in it and the layers, I'm an, and I'm excited to edit it. So let's get started. Uh, let's see how, I'm curious how 400H would look on this and then 160NS. So there's 400H. That looks really cool. Uh, it looks great. Uh, let's see how that compares to 160NS. Ah, okay. Interesting. So the, the reason I was curious is that 160 NS really uh, plays upon uh, magenta and cyan colors. So their skin tones and even the, the, the color of the, uh, the outfits that everyone's wearing, the, that red, it really changes with 160 NS. I think that 400H looks really good. I'm going to do a quick edit with this. So here's lens correction on. The white balance looks pretty good. I might actually go towards green just a tiny bit. There's a lot of red reflection from the clothing like on the underside of her chin right here and on the, on the side of his face. I'm gonna try to correct that out a little bit. I don't wanna go too far because something else is gonna turn totally green if I do. And when I'm looking at this photo, a lot of people ask like, how do you get tint correct? Um, or how do you get tint and white balance correct? What are you looking for? I am always looking at two things. I'm looking for a neutral somewhere in the photo, some, a neutral color being like black, gray, or white. I'm seeing if those are drifting into being either magenta or green. That's how I figure out tint. Um, and white balance is really easy. So Kelvin, if something is too hot or too cool, most people can see that really well. Uh, but I prioritize skin tone. So right now I'm looking at them. I'm, I'm mostly looking at the couple here and, and occasionally at the girl on the, on the left side. But I'm going to be optimizing my edit 
for their skin tone and I don't care what happens to the background. The background will just fall into line, however, after the skin is right. Um, some people start with some random thing that they think should look a certain color uh, and then they're trying to get that right and then they look at the skin and the skin is off. You should always start with the skin and work out from there. So this looks pretty good to me. I neutralized some of the magenta. Color balance looks just about right. I'm going to increase exposure and see what happens. So the next step to get more of that light and airy look. And I'm also going to do all soft because there is quite a bit of a contrast difference between say the front of her face and her chin or behind her. This is shot in like high overcast conditions. So not, you know, fairly soft light, but not the softest. All soft should balance it out just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So this is before all soft and that's with all soft. That looks perfect to me. I'll show you the before and after. So this is before. All right. Just your, your regular gray looking unsaturated raw file. And that is after with Fuji 400 H original. Yeah. Looks really good. Looks amazing. Um, thank you so much for sending this photo in. I love it. Okay. Let's move on down the line here. So this was sent to us by Shazli Fami from a Canon camera shot with a 50 millimeter lens at 1.8. A really nice photo. It's just beautiful. I'm looking forward to editing this one. So thank you for sending it in. So on this one, I'm going to do Fuji 800Z. And bam, I mean, that just looks, I don't want to make this a boring editing session, but honestly, like most of these photos are just one click and they're done. Uh, I could make it complicated for you if you want, but it's not. Uh, if the image is just shot with the intention of it being light and airy, it should be just like a one or two click edit. Um, so that looks really good with 800Z. Why did I pick 800Z? Because there's a lot of interesting highlights in this photo. There's a lot of really bright spots like the back of her veil and the sky. And 800Z really plays upon highlights and gives it that nice peach or pink look. So that's why I went with it and it looks great. I'm going to zoom in so you can see them just a little bit better. And I'm also going to do a lens correction on. Holy cow. Okay, this needed a lot of lens correction. That's why I do exposure after lens correction. So I did lens correction on. I'm going to drop it just a tiny bit. Yes, this is getting better and better and better. And then I'm going to do uh, highlight soft. Perfect. Perfect. Did you see how that like just was the last step that we needed? It's awesome. It brought back all the detail in her veil and in the sky. So that is just super duper. I love this one. Uh, I'm going to zoom out so you can see the whole thing. That is a beautiful photo. That is like an ideal light and airy photo. It was shot just perfect, made it really easy to edit. Um, and the color science in Capture One is really cool. We've been having this discussion in the office about like, why is it different? Like what, how do you quantify how it's different than Lightroom? Um, gosh, I would say, I don't even know how to explain it. I would say this, the color is richer, but not in a saturated way, but just richer in the midtones and shadows. That's how I explain it to myself. That's why I enjoy it. Um, and I also find that the micro contrast is a little bit better in Capture One. I, and it's because they have a totally different rendering engine than Lightroom. Both, are, both platforms are really good, uh, but there are some differences. And that's just something that I enjoy with um, Capture One is the, the mid-tone and shadow detail, uh, shadow color is just so gorgeous. I find that in Lightroom, it just kind of fades to gray when you get to midtones and shadows or like dark midtones to shadows. 
like the color information just isn't there. But in Lightroom or in Capture One, I mean, if I zoom in, like this photo, for example, like just, I don't know, it's little things like the back of his neck right here where it almost becomes like black hair. There's still like some color detail in here or like the transition from the bright part of her cheek to the part where it's reflecting their clothing to the part underneath where it's not reflecting and you get that, you know, her natural skin tone again. That, that is what I'm talking about. I, it's hard to explain. Um, if you're a Capture One user, maybe you can explain better than me. I mean, I'm a Capture One user too, but if you're like a super long time, you know, veteran pro, maybe you have better language to describe it. All right, moving on. Um, okay, oh, thank you so much, Shazli, for this photo. It's, it's cool. All right, so this is from Reagan Sarmiento. And I'm gonna do my very best to make this look like this or this, but I wanted to point out that the conditions for this photo are not ideal for a light and airy look because it, it doesn't have a nice clean background that's really separate or separated from the subjects. It's shot inside with tungsten light, not natural daylight. Um, and yeah, I, I think the outfits and everything will work. And when I do some uh, white balance correction, maybe we'll get closer, but it's just not set up for a really nice edit like this. It would be the same if I was shooting real film. So if I had my, my Contax or Pentax 645 with Fuji 400H loaded in it, and I shot inside in this setting, I'm going to get the same results I'm about to show you, uh, with the styles. So we'll, we'll do the best we can. Still a really cool image. And, you know, I always told myself in my 20 years of wedding photography, like, and it's kind of a funny saying, I say it to myself, but it's like, if it don't look right, make it black and white. And that's what I would do if you had like kind of um, bad, bad lighting or lighting that's a really bad uh, temperature or color. So here's Fuji 400H. I'm going to do lens correction on, adjust my exposure down just a tiny bit, and now I'm going to get to work fixing the, uh, the weird color of the light in here, this tungsten lighting. So I'm going to drop the Kelvin towards something cooler. Sometimes I'm surprised. Sometimes like with really careful color correction, you, you can get a really good look still. Um, they're a little bit magenta to me. And what I'm looking at here is, I'll zoom in for you, is I'm looking at her hair right here. There's no really good clear neutrals in here. Maybe the back of his jacket. And their skin tones just seem a little bit off. So I see it as being too, um, too magenta. So I'm gonna go towards green. Okay, that's a little better. And I'm gonna back off on the Kelvin again. So I'm just kind of working these two sliders. And we're, oh shoot, that's a little far. Now we went too far. How about right? A little bit more. I think only to a photographer would this be interesting, like watching someone twiddle with uh, white balance. But that is about as good as I can get it with 400H. I'm gonna do, there, a, there's a little bit of like motion blur or something happening here, which takes away the contrast. Um, so I'm gonna do all hard, see if that makes a difference in a positive way. A good difference. Yeah, that, that looks pretty cool actually. That looks good. That's about as good as I can get it in these conditions. Again, it's, it's not going to be like this or like this because we, we weren't set up for success with the lighting we're in, but it's not a bad light and airy edit still. And I'm going to show you before and after real quick. And then I've got just a little more time here to edit and then I've got to go. But this is before 
and that's after. That's not. That's actually not a bad lightenary edit, uh, all things considered. All right. So Summer, you wanted me to edit this photo, and it's a really nice photo. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to ask real quick here. Do we have any questions? Uh, yeah. So Adam Meskin is asking if we have any hard contrast images to edit. Um, I will find one for you. Like like hard light? The sunset one. Hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. OK, I do. Adam, I do. I'll do that right after this. All right, so Summer, thank you for sending this in. Um, and let's give it a shot. So we're going to do 400H neutral. And now I am going to do uh, lens correction on. The exposure seems about right. It might be a little high. Bring it down just a tiny bit. And the image is just way too cool in general. So I need to warm it up. Cool. I think maybe right about there. Let me see what this looks like with 160 NS. That's nice. Looks really nice too. And then 800 Z. Ah, that's a little too much. I think I'm going to do 160 NS. That looks really good. All right. So we got 160 NS. Very simple edit. Uh, there's a lot of white sky behind her up here. There's going to be no detail in it. Um, maybe a little bit right when it hits the horizon. And part of her dress is a little bit blown out. So I'm going to try all soft and see what happens. Let's see. So this is without all soft. I think that looks good, actually. So all soft. And what the heck? I'm going to add 30, whoops, 35 millimeter grain. There we go. Cool. That looks good. Um, the only thing I would do to this photo is I would, I would go in and touch up like the straw in, in the horse's mane and some of the skin marks, you know, like scars and things on the horse. But overall, it looks really, really nice. So I appreciate you sending this in, Summer. And here is the before. And here is after. Beautiful photo. All right, Adam, I haven't forgotten about you. We are going to do something with harsher, what was it? Harsher contrast, more contrast? Hard contrast. Hard contrast. OK. So our friends at Nordica uh, Photography actually sent this to us. Um, and it's a beautiful image. And this may have the harder contrast that you were looking for. So let's do, let's see, that's 160NS. That's 400H, and that is 800Z. It's really hard to tell the difference between all of them because this image is so dark right now. It needs some help. Um, I'm going to go. With, I'm just going to stay with 400H neutral. I'm going to crop in a little bit just so that we can see what we're working with better. And I'm going to do lens correction on. Play with the exposure just a tiny bit. We've got some lens flare, but that's all right. Yeah, actually, it's working just fine. And then, so with the hard contrast or the you know the the big difference in the light and dark parts here. Uh, we can try all soft or highlight soft. So let's try all soft or highlight soft. I think all soft looks just about perfect. And then as far as color goes, it depends on what you're going for. So this was shot at sunset. There's lens flare. I think it looks really nice warm like this. If you look at her dress, her dress is actually cool. In fact, this image could be warmed up, if anything. Um, maybe to about here. It's a little too far. 
That looks good. This is a tricky image because I'm having to look not where I normally look for, for skin tone correction because they're in the middle of a lens flare and a lens flare is like orange or red. I'm actually looking at the bottom of her dress down here. This is the only part of the photo that I can establish that's neutral. So that's where my eye is going, just this little tiny, tiny part of the dress. And if I'm looking at that, I might even go warmer to about there. That looks great. And I'll show you the before and after. So that is before and that is after with a high contrast image. All right. Okay. I'm going to do just four or five edits super quick. Do you have a question? No? Okay. I'm going to do four or five edits super quick and then we'll wrap it up. And if there's anything else you want to know, we're going to be, or we're always in the, in the Mass and Labs community on Facebook. So if you're not already there, just type in Mass Labs community, join, and we'll be there. Whether or not you own anything we make, it doesn't matter. <coughs> and we're especially excited to welcome Capture One users. So come in, make yourselves at home. We have a really nice community. And uh, if you want to see any of your photos edited with Mass and Labs in Capture One or in Lightroom, uh, our doors are always open in the community. Just come in. Put your photo in a Dropbox folder, send the link along with a, I recommend, along with a JPEG of the unedited photo and put that in the group as a post and you'll have like 25 people jump in and edit that photo for you. It's amazing. It's the best group on the internet. Um, so please do that. All right. Speed edit time. Let's do this. Okay. All right. Fuji 400H. Boom, lens correction on, and warm it up just a tiny bit. Perfect, perfect edit. Here's before, there's after. Micro contrast, beautiful greens, nice and clean. The whites are white, everything looks good. Love it. All right. So this is by Caitlin McCoy. Let's do, let's do 160 NS. 160 NS, lens correction on, increase the exposure. Uh, this photo is a little magenta, so I'm gonna go towards green. Perfect, and a little warmer, and a little more exposure and a little warmer and a little warmer I'm not gonna stop till it's perfect all right that looks really good um, yeah thank you for sending it in Caitlin here is before and there is after that was an edit with lots of tweaks lots and lots and lots of tweaks I'm kidding White balance and tint are not tweaks. Those are just things you have to do. And exposure. Uh, this is Kristen Crybell. Thank you for sending this in. Let's do 400H. Or let's do Fuji Color 800Z. Let's do that. Okay. 800Z. Lens correction on. I'm going to increase the exposure just a tiny bit. I'm looking at the midtones with their skin. And I'm going to do all soft. They're a little bit cool. I'm going to bring up the exposure one more time. All right. Is that my final answer? It is. This looks so good. This looks so good. So here is the before, and here is the after. Thank you for sending it in. All right, let's keep going. Let's run through this. All right, this is by Tiffany Sankster. Do 400H neutral, lens correction on, exposure up. 
maybe way up. It's a pretty, pretty dark image. Now we're getting there. The way that our, our, uh, our, our styles and presets work is that they're like film. You can take that exposure slider and go way, way, way up, and you're not going to blow anything out. They're created to uh, maximize highlight detail, just like film does. And they have a really uh, high ceiling on exposure. You can go way up, and you're not going to like ruin the image. That, that sometimes throws people for a loop. Um, they're afraid to like drag that exposure slider way up. But with what we make, all of, that, all of your highlights are protected for a really long way, so you don't have to worry. I'm going to increase the temperature just a little bit. A little bit more exposure. I'm almost at plus two, or you know, 1.9 exposure. That's pretty high to add, but totally fine. That's what the image needs. And now I'm just dialing in the perfect white balance. Go a little more green, just a tiny bit. Oh yeah, there we go. And then let's see how this looks with all soft. There we go. Yes. Yes, perfect. Okay. I'll show you the before and after. Here is the before. Here is the after. So thank you for sending this in. Really cool image. All right. We've got this one from Vitalina Gurgovskaya. Beautiful image. I'm going to actually crop this one in before we start. Uh, just because the, uh, whoops, the sky is, or the, uh, there's so much space above her head. That's what I'm trying to say. And I want, I want to see her better. So I'm going to start cropped in just a little bit. Let's do, let's do 160 NS. Lens correction on. Increase the exposure just a little bit. And the temperature. Beautiful photo. Right there. And I'm actually curious to see this with Fuji 400H Blue. I'm going to knock these greens down just a little bit. There we go. I love it. Looks really good. This is the before. And that is the after. All right. So I hope that was very, very useful and helpful. Um, yeah, we're really, really excited to have Fuji Original for Capture One uh, releasing today. We've got a lot of other really good products coming out soon. Um, and yeah, and the, the Capture One community is super amazing. And, and we're excited to be welcoming, welcoming it into our main community. It's really cool. I think everyone's going to love each other. So uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. We have live edits every two weeks, a uh, different subject every time. If you want to see your photo in a live edit, please send it in to us early. If you send it in early, your chances are like 99% that I will edit it. If you send it in at the last second, I will do what I can do. But I always love to see community images, and I love the community. So thank you so much, and can't wait to see you next time.